This is a Kiko Sudano from StampinInTheMeadows.com in Downingtown, Pennsylvania. And I want to welcome you. Oh my goodness, okay, I just missed that. Um, today, I am going to, uh, there we go. Today, I'm going to um, make show you how to make this um, this pretty card, and it's um, this is with the uh, the Stampin' Up Seaside View stamp set, and here's the stamp set. It's a cling stamp set, and it's got all of these pretty um, beachside seaside images, and um, just very relaxing. And this is a card that I cased from the catalog, and I changed up. Um, in a lot of different ways. But one of the things that um, that I uh, noticed when I saw the instructions for it was that this is watercolor. And I said, you know, this is perfect. This is a perfect little image for doing a, a, a practicing the watercolor uh, techniques, watercoloring with, a, um, with a, a water brush and with your inks. And so that's, that's how I colored this image. So Good morning, uh, good afternoon, Karen. Good afternoon, Patricia and Debbie. Thank you so much for joining me today. So let me um, go ahead and uh, get started. I, I've done a lot of things ahead of time. And um, basically, I, I started with, um, this is this is the uh, image that I'm going to uh, color in today's, um, today's video. Um, what I've done is I've taken this image and and the trees and then the two little birds also and I stamped them in stays on ink in on a uh, watercolor paper so um, this is and then I cut it out with the um, the largest square stitch square from the um, the stitch shapes dies the that's the die set that has the the circle and the oval and the, the square hi Amy thank you for joining me Oh, hello, Doug. Thank you also for joining me. And so I, I cut it out with that, and then I'm going to go ahead and, and do the watercoloring on top of the uh, the die-cut shape. So this has already been stamped, and it's already been, um, been uh, uh, stamped and stays on, and then die-cut. And it's all, I'm doing this on watercolor. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I have the horizon here. Hopefully this is in the, the picture. I had the horizon here for um, the, the horizon. And so what I did, and I was really pleased with how this came out, is I lined this up so that this is about a half, an inch and a half up. And I took a ruler and put that on here. And I made the line with my pencil. And at first I'm like, oh my goodness, maybe that's going to show. But it, it um, doesn't show. And I don't even have to erase it afterwards. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to skip the chair because I don't want to. I'm not going to do the chair. And I'll do it here. And then the rest of this is is kind of, uh, the, the, the rest of this color is just kind of, uh, with it with the tree and the branches and stuff it's kind of uh, messy but that's going to give me my nice straight horizon line so I'm also not sure how long this is going to take I'm going to give myself a, about 15 minutes to work on some water coloring here and um, then I'm going to um, and uh, we'll see okay so the first thing this is the first this is the first image that I did and um, I, uh, you, you can, I don't know if you can see, hopefully you can see that everything is kind of splotchy. So the, um, the first thing that I do is I'm going to start with coloring the sand and I'm going to color that in, um, in, uh, Sahara sand. And I'm going to just put my, uh, water brush all over, um, all over this area. And then just to get everything a little bit wet. Now, right here, I noticed my house is just very, very, the heat is on and everything is just dries out very quickly. So I, I don't quite understand the um, whole uh, watercoloring 
technique and stuff but I know that if I put if I put the water down first it's not going to be quite so blotchy and it's going to give me a little bit of a smoother edge here so I'm going to imagine that the sand is going to come over here so I'm going to make this wet also and just um, make it just kind of wet and it um, I don't know I think some of it's in the paper still but it's a, a lot of it I feel like has already dried. I don't see any shine on the paper and I definitely don't see any standing water. So then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, since I'm going to use the Harris Sand ink, I'm going to get, and I have a couple of these little um, uh, stamp blocks and these are the, uh, the stupid little ones that cost a dollar that I don't know that Michaels used to have. I don't know if they still have them, but um, I'm going to um, use that as a uh, as a palette. And I uh, stamped the Sahara Sand ink just in the corner here. And I'm going to take a little bit of the color and then bring it out and, and kind of mix it up and then uh, squeeze some water from my um, water painter in here to kind of give me a little bit of a puddle and I can never tell if this is dark or light um, when I put it on so I'm going to start under the the chair here because I'm going to have this is going to have shadow so I'm going to start with here and then this is going to be the darkest part and um, it's always uh, a lot darker than um, than you than it that, that it th you think it's going to be and especially sand I, I um, like my sand to be um, I like my sand to be white and um, yet yeah, most beaches have kind of a Sahara sand colored sand um, so um, so we'll start where it's darker here and then it that will um, so that will be where the darkest sand should be. Um, and then just kind of continue going down. And then I'm going to pull some more here and make a, kind of a, a splotchy puddle because I have to go up here and I don't have any shadow area up here. But the, the, the once, the more you, um, the more you uh, paint, the lighter, the um, lighter it's going to get. So I kind of start from the top and I kind of go down and then I end up with a, a lighter um, a lighter area. So I like this color. I feel like this is very definitely a shade uh, color. I don't know if you can see the, uh, the contrast. Let me uh, bring it up closer to the camera so that you can see uh, the um, maybe a little bit more contrast in the color so it, it, it it's darker under the chair and then it goes lighter as it um, goes out I think I'm gonna make this a little bit darker so I'm gonna put um, a little bit more and then here it's gonna be a little dark too so I can do this and then just kind of use the rest of the water to kind of spread it around the water from the uh, water painter just to kind of spread it around and it does seem to um it does seem to spread around a little bit um better when you when i put water on it and i'm getting some more and i'm gonna i think i'm gonna squeeze some more because i feel like i need a little bit more liquid in here and it's like you can barely see the color here And, and with watercoloring, it's like you can always add more color, add more color. So go light and um, then add more color. And another air thing to do is um, where you got, um, where you got uh, the lines for the, uh, the sandbar, you can um, use that to also put your uh, first pieces of dark dark paint and then dark, yeah dark ink and then then here this is going to be the 
the shore so that that can be darker and then another thing it, it's gonna go lighter and so it is I just keep going in this side to side motion and that seems to that seems to be a, a, a key that seemed to be a key and I'm gonna make this a little darker right here because I don't have any uh, lines there and I'm gonna pick up some more of this light stuff and on the edge come up and make this just a little bit darker but I don't have any lines here so I'm gonna make that because that's where the um, the water is gonna come in and then I want to do just a little bit more um, back in here behind my table and the table cut out and this can be darker I think and I'm just using and I'm using the uh, the uh, the smallest uh, uh, brush in the new uh, Stampin' Up! Brush Trio in their water. I think they call them water painters now. Okay, I don't know if that's too dark, but let's just go with that and see how that goes. I think, I think that looks okay. And I'm just putting color. I'm going to add just a little bit more darkness under here. I'm just adding color um, up to the stitching and not going around, not going on the outside of the stitching except in the uh, except in the uh, on the trees on the leaves of the trees then I'll go let me see if I can add a little bit more here and I'm hoping yeah okay good I'm hoping that I'm staying in the camera I'm gonna add just a little bit more right in here there we go oh, that was probably a little too dark that's okay. Should just add just a little bit more right in here. There. Okay. I think that's good. All right. So that's 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 my sand, and I'm gonna do um, basically. Now I'm gonna uh, squeeze the um, water out, and and I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to do the water next. Okay, so I've got another one of these little ink um, stamp pads, and I'm going to start on the water, and I'm going to do the water in a Pacific Point. So I'm going to um, put a little bit of Pacific Point on one corner of this, and Bermuda Bay. So I'll do the other side in Bermuda Bay. And I'm going to be careful that I don't make too big of a mess. And I always seem to get ink on myself every time I go to open up and close my ink pads. So let me wipe that off before I mess, mess up even worse. All right, so we've got the horizon here. Let me go ahead and leave this here because I want a, a dry brush. I, I squeezed out, um, check to see if um, I don't have, because I'm just using a, a single um, painting, a single paintbrush. So um, water brush, water painter. So I'm, I'm, I wanted to make sure that my water was, um, was not brown from the uh, Sahara sand. And I'm going to pick up the um, Pacific point and I'm going to just run that right along the pencil mark as straight as I can do it yeah so this um, gives me a good definition of my horizon and um, I can go in here too a little bit gives me a good definition of my horizon and it also uh, allows me to uh, it, it, it allows me to uh, 
and it covers up my uh, the pencil mark. So then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start right underneath that line, and I'm going to now. There, see, there's a lot of ink on my on my brush, but I haven't laid down any water yet, so I want to bring this down, and um, it's going to get lighter as I go further, and I'll go in here to underneath the, the, the um, arm of the chair and go down. And it gets lighter as it goes down. And just continue going all the way down to my sand. So I want to continue doing that, but I, I think what I'll do is I want to kind of hurry this up a little bit so I want to go ahead and start I'm going to just work on this little section here and um, then start with my Bermuda Bay and I'm gonna since I'm mixing everything I'm pulling a little bit of Bermuda Bay um, ink out and squeezing my water brush um, to get a bunch of water in there and then I'll start up here near the top and add more color and again going in a in a, a sideways direction and the, the color gets lighter the more um, water comes out of my pen my water painter and then I'm just kind of straighten up the lines here for the most part, I want to go sideways back and forth. I'm going to do that again, trying to focus on make it a little darker on the top so that it it really gets lighter on the bottom. Okay, so then I'm going to um, come back and get some more of the Pacific Point and squeeze some more water in there. And then go back up to the horizon line and then I get that deep dark blue. And then it starts to blend with the Bermuda Bay and it gets lighter as it goes down. And you can make this um, this intense blue area as, um, as uh, long as you like and as dark as you like. Add another layer of that now right at this point my um my ocean here is is pretty wet so the um the two ink colors are doing a, a nice job of blending and i'm going to add some more water to this bermuda bay area and um i think i'm going to squeeze some of it out because i think this is just a little too wet pull this in and then bring this see if i can smooth this out and bring this because I don't think I want to add too much more color to the um, Bermuda Bay area down here. But that's basically the technique. I think I want to add just a little bit more in here. But that's basically the technique for getting the uh, dark Pacific point at the top and then blending it down to uh, getting a lighter Bermuda Bay at the bottom here. So then let me... Um, um, go ahead and um, show you what I did with the sky because this is yeah this is this is fun oh thank you Pam for watching thank you for joining me um, let me see who else did I did somebody else join me that I because I've been focusing on uh, on uh, painting and I have been checking so thanks everybody oh hi Marty thank you for joining too 
and and Chris, thanks. Thank you, everybody. It's uh, it started snowing here maybe about uh, 25 minutes ago, and uh, so this is definitely uh, this is definitely uh, making cards and um, especially thinking about going to the beach is a nice thing to do. So next, I'm going to uh, pull out another one of these things, and I'm gonna um, do the sky. And I did the sky in balmy blue. And I'm going to show you that. And um, I wanted to leave the, um, uh, good. I was worried that I stamped my um, image with uh, my stamp pad. That's not, that would not have been good. Um, and uh, just do uh, the, the, the top part here. So first I'm going to, I cleaned off my, my pen to get all of the intense blue off. And just, um, just uh, um, put it on a, paper towel and and I squeeze it here to push more water I think it's um it's it, it's doing pretty good in terms of giving me the water and I'm gonna make um I'm gonna put some um water on the paper and I, I want to keep the birds um kind of white but I want to just um, put some water on around just get it wet it's it's funny i don't know if you can see the um the um it's just so dry my my heater just turned off but it's just very very dry in the house and it, it's pretty much um there's not a lot of water on the paper here so um but it, it seems to be just enough which i guess that's good so i'm gonna do the same thing and i'm gonna pull the color Pull a little bit of color out and make kind of a, a puddle of ink here in uh, the the lighter color. And I'm gonna have the um, the dark start on the top here with the darker shade. And I actually kind of do it to the side. This is a very long. Um, the, these new uh, painters have uh, very long brushes, um, and so I'm gonna go around. I'm gonna be careful not to to get hit the birds and I guess it, it even though there's not a lot of water it, it it's kind of um, seems to be enough to make the um, ink flow you know when when you watch the uh, watercolor tutorials it's say like you put the water down on your paper and then you put your paint on and and then it just kind of flows you let it go to where it wants to go well so it's uh, there's not a lot of water that's staying on here, so I wasn't quite sure how um, it was going to be, but it, it seems to be just enough. So, and then just as I let it go and go from the top and then go down, getting in around the birds. And then I guess... Um, the uh, thing is, and I don't want to, I don't want to touch the ocean here because I don't want to reactivate the, um, the water, um, I mean the ink on the water and um, have everything bleed back up here. So just go around the birds. I want to keep my birds white. Make it a little... Okay, maybe that was just a little too much color. And then another thing is that it, from the, the edges, you can kind of start there and start with the edge and, and bring the color in so so that your ed the edges of your um, panel are just a little have a little more intense color and then bring it in and the the um, the longer you stay on here the um, the wetter your paper is going to be and it's gonna um, it's going to uh, gonna um, I guess it, 
it's, it's going to retain the water more and and that's and I think that's fine let's see here let's get so I want to bring some more color out here and that makes it that makes it lighter too the more it mixes with the water here so then um let me see yeah, okay that's not too too dark And then the more water you have on your, the wetter your paper ends up getting, the more um, you can move the color around. So if you put it down and you say, oh my goodness, that's too dark, then you can just kind of, um, and then and then I just kind of keep it to move the um, paint and then it gets, to give, give it, make it smooth. Cause I don't want it to be splotchy like that, like um, this first one. This verse was just a little too splotchy and I've been fairly successful in, in keeping it um, keeping it um, soft. And so the key is go back and forth, and then you kind of get differences, especially in the sky, different, different color va variations that kind of look like um, kind of look like clouds in, in in the sky, kind of like wispy clouds and stuff. Oh, Amy, you're getting some uh, some flurries too. Yeah, I think I think it's not supposed to be too bad. We're only supposed to get about um, we're only supposed to get up to eight about eight inches, and so it's like oh, that's not going to be too bad. But it's it's I think it's it's always pretty when it when it snows and and. Um, and especially if it's snowing softly and you don't have to worry about losing power or you don't have to worry about losing um, um, your internet. And that That's the worst, I think. Okay, so then for the little, let me go ahead and do the, um, the uh, little iced tea cup here because for the, um, I decided I'm gonna have a uh, cup of iced tea and I, I did uh, use cinnamon cider. And so it, it's just such a small, uh, a small amount. And I, uh, I've got like some in here in the, 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 uh, the top of my um, ink pad. So I'm going to just pick it up from there and just um, color the tea. That cinnamon cider really makes a nice iced tea, makes a nice cup of iced tea. And then I'm gonna clean this off. And, yeah, okay, good. And then just uh, get just a touch of Daffodil Delight to give me a little bit of a, for the lemon and And that just a little bit is uh, get, it gives me just a touch of that for the lemon. Goodness. Okay, so one uh, a couple final things I wanted to show you is coloring the 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 trees and with the the. Um, the the I, I like to do the sky first because then I get color up there. Be, and I, I because I don't want my um, I don't want I my green. Um, from the leaves to um, go into the um, into the sky. So I use a uh, uh, garden green for the um, the uh, the leaves on the tree. And with with the leaves on the tree, I want it to be a fairly intense color. And so I want to make sure that my brush is as dry as possible so I don't want to squeeze water out of there and I'll just pick up some color um, put it on my block and then pick up some color and then just kind of um, um, flick flick the flick the leaves to cover to, to make sure that I've got color on the leaves and again the more you um, the um, the paint the more water is going to come out and so it's going to make it um, lighter and so um, get some more uh, color do that frequently and let's see I'm going to go ahead and just color all of this and then it's going to end up being um, lighter and then I can go over here 
and um, color some of these leaves. And then you get a contrast in color that um, makes it, um, makes, gives you more interest and gives you more movement in your tree. And then if you feel like you've got too much water in your brush, um, just uh, dry it up a little bit with your paper towel. And um, do this. And that's, and that's, so basically, that's how I colored the tree, uh, the, the leaves of the tree. And I, I, I found that um, there's just a lot of white in between the, um, the leaves and the sky. And most of the time it, it's, 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 um, most of the time it's fine. It just get, it looks like highlights, the sun shining through and stuff. Um, it, it really um, ends up being pretty. There. And then also, if you um, go over it a couple more times, then it makes it darker. And then the final thing that I did was for my um, tree trunks, I used um, soft suede ink. So let me go ahead and show you that. So I put a little bit of soft suede here. And... I'm going to use the same technique because um, for the sky and for the sand, I wanted um, the color to be uh, lighter than uh, the ink color. But for the tree trunks and um, the, the leaves, I really wanted a, a more intense color. So I um, didn't, I, I basically just go directly on uh, where the ink is with the tip of the uh, water painter and then uh, put that down on my um, on uh, on my paper to keep it as keep it an intense color So that those are the techniques that I used for for coloring this image, and and I wanted to uh, I didn't want to take the whole whole afternoon here um, doing this, but it, I it just the rest of the I've, I've got several different images, and and here's one that I did just this morning um, that I'm going to go ahead and and use this on my card before I uh, go ahead and assemble my card. I wanted to um, take the time and say. Um, after you um, watercolor with um, the paper like this, um, you're, you're especially um, with the water brush, you're going to end up, and, and when it gets uh, real wet like this, it's going to end up being a little, it's going to come out uh, a little warp. You can already see that this one's already starting to, uh, to bend. So it, it, what I've done in the past is I've taken this and I've like put it under books. I've also heard of, um, I've also ironed it, put it between uh, a piece of, uh, uh, a piece of typewriter paper, printer paper, now they call it, put it in a uh, printer paper and iron it just to get it a little bit straight. Um, this one I did not iron and, and you can see it's it's not really too bad. And so it's it's up to you. Um, it, and, and I think other people who have uh, done watercolor cards have, ha there's a lot of different 
uh, tips out, out um, there for um, straightening your card, which I've, I've read a lot of them. So let me go ahead and assemble my card um, with, um, and tell you what I what I did with the rest of that, with um, this image, which I uh, painted this morning. And basically I used all of the techniques that I showed you on this day, on, on this little panel to, um, to color um, this panel. Um, yeah, to color this petal. It gets a little bit trickier when you go on the inside here and you, you just want to kind of use that same, uh, the same kind of techniques that we did um, here and here to kind of make sure you've got kind of an even, even color there. So the first thing, I put this on a uh, soft seafoam card base and I have a panel that I have embossed with the undersea embossing folder. So that goes with our um, our uh, sea theme, our beachside theme. And I'm just going to adhere this. And I'm using stamp and seal for adhering this. And um, and so you can use whatever wanted to make sure I didn't have any um, glue on the edge there. And I'm going to just center this on my card here. All right. And then I have a panel of... Uh, oh... Tasteful, the tasteful uh, touches, I think, um, designer series paper. It's the wood grain, and this is um, this is this particular piece is not as weathered, but this is the one that has the real weathered look, um, not not the fine uh, designer uh, uh, wood planks, but that's um, th that that's uh, a, a nice. I I felt that goes really well with our um, beach theme. So put this down, kind of like driftwood. And yeah, just kind of trying to line it up here. And of course my card is crooked. So straighten that out. There we go. There we go. I think that's good. All right. So I've got this down, and then the next thing I did was take a um, uh, piece of um, some linen linen thread, and I'm going to wrap it around, double wrap it, and make a bow on the side. In good taste. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I don't know what what it is about. I'm just uh, losing my mind with everything today. That's the part that's connected. Yep. No, it's not. There we go. All right. Is that? That's long enough. Okay. And I'm going to just wrap this around. Make a bow on the side here. I think that's going to be okay. I'm going to tie it, and then I'm going to go ahead and tie this in a knot and then make my bow. And this way, if it uh, if it comes undone, then the linen thread is still there. And that, that side is just a little short, so we'll make this a small loop. We don't need very much, just a little bit of something. All right, and then I've already taken um, 
this, um, the, uh, I've stamped the, uh, the sentiment, take time for yourself, in uh, Versamark ink on a piece of uh, uh, black, basic black cardstock, and I embossed it with uh, white embossing powder. So I've already um, gone ahead and made this. And what I I use the uh, the uh, angle die from the um, from the always dies um, to give it a cute little angle here that I thought was pretty cute. And then I also took a piece of the um the braided trim now the braided trim if you um take this you can pull it uh apart a little bit and it gives you uh, a wider thing and it's kind of fun i felt like this um would uh make it nice and rustic to kind of go with the beach theme kind of like a uh i don't know like a a a, a a, a mat or something. So I did that with the length of this and I'm going to take this and I'm going to put this on the back of my um, of my label and I'm going to put, uh, adhere it with um, some glue dots at the bottom here. So here's my glue dots and uh, uh, let's see, here's my tweezers and I'm going to just take it and fold it over and this is the bottom and just put a couple of glue dots on the bottom of my panel here. Oops, that's on the wrong side. So that's the top, that's fine. Put this one on the middle of the bottom So that's the bottom. I'm just folding this over so that I just get the um, the bottom section here. Three glue dots, double check to make sure that's the bottom, and it is. And then I'm gonna take um, this um, little piece of um, braided linen twine and, and just put it on the bottom on top of those glue dots. Try not to stretch it out, but just make it so that I've got a little bit of a, of a rustic trim coming out of the label like that. That's fine. And then I'm going to um, trim the ends of this. And I'm going to just go on an angle so that it um, repeats it. Maybe make that a little sharper there. So that it kind of picks up on the angle of uh, this label. There. There we go. So that's our label, and that's gonna stick. So I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna leave that up. And then I'm going to, um, I think this was the one that I was gonna do. Yes, because this was the one with the, um, that I um, decided, I decided late this morning that it needed to have seagulls. So I want, and I wanted to have the seagull. I, um, I stamped seagulls on this one and that doesn't look right. So I said, okay, I need to make, make sure I stamp the seagulls before I um, watercolor it because seagulls are white. So I'm gonna put it here, um, my little panel on with dimensionals. There we go. Put this on right here so that I have a little bit of the wood showing through on that side. Make sure my bow is, yep, good. Make sure my bow is there and make sure I'm straight. There we go. 
Okay, and then just um, add uh, some dimensionals to the top of my label. And I think this, um, the label could be on top of um, the panel, but I decided to just go ahead and put it underneath the panel. Oops, sorry about that. And just put it underneath there. And this stamp set has just got such relaxing images, but it's also got uh, beautiful, um, relaxing sentiments too, which I think are, are, are really nice. And then I'm going to um, take some, uh, some of the sequins and um, finish the front with just some of these um, sequins. This is the Artistry Bloom sequins, I think. Put one of, uh, put a blue one on and then, uh, uh, a yellow one and then uh, uh, I think we'll do the do the red one and do a big one this time there we go I'll put it right here okay so that's that that's the card front and then on the inside I um I went ahead and um I I I stamped the um the trees again and this time since I'm doing this with um with um uh, regular basic white cardstock instead of watercolor cardstock. I did the same technique for coloring this with uh, putting on the little uh, panel but I used the blender pen to pick up my uh, my um, ink and apply the ink to the paper and it's basically the same technique so I went ahead and, and, and pre-did that but I wanted to show you that 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 uses the same technique um, for doing the trees um, with the blender pen um, instead of the uh, water painter and that way I didn't end up with uh, a soggy uh, panel Oops, let me first put my um, trim and then I saved, um, cut another piece of, uh, uh, another piece of in good taste designer series paper for um, the bottom so that it would pick up the wood trim from here as well. And just put a little bit of that on and put this on here. And then I will just adhere this to the inside of my card over to the edge here and put this on the inside of my card and then that's my card for today and thank you so much for joining me and um, I really I really hope that you guys give uh, give this uh, give the watercolor technique a try because it you have so many different um, colors of ink that you can choose from and um, these little images are just really easy because like really I I'm not uh, a, a trained painter or artist or anything but it really having a watercolor image on your card just really makes it a little bit different. From um from everything else, so um I think and and this little image is easy to do and it's um it's um it, it it's fun um so give it a try and I hope thank you so much for joining me I hope everybody has a great week and um I'll see you next week so bye bye hopefully I'll be faster next week bye bye.